Hello, I'm Paul Kulchenko, and this video is a demonstration of Zero Brain Studio integration and debugging support for Lua scripts running on Mi Casavera devices. Let me first introduce you to Zero Brain Studio. Zero Brain Studio is a lightweight Lua IDE that provides support for many Lua environments and has been recently extended to support script development on Vera devices. Vera until now has had limited support for script development of device and event code. Typically, the development cycle for Lua code has required the use of Lua IDE running on a computer to develop and test code without being able to call loop functions, copy script files to Vera either using the web interface or a tool such as SCP, test again on Vera using login to debug and troubleshoot problems related to loop calls, return to the computer, and then repeat the cycle. This process is slow and laborious. Zero Brain Studio for Vera removes this entire cycle and allows the running and debugging of Lua scripts on Vera devices directly from Zero Brain Studio on your Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X system. Once your code is tested and ready for deployment, simply tell Zero Brain to copy your script files to the device. During a debugging session, because your code is running on the actual device, loop functions are called, so you do not need to create dummy loop functions when testing on your Lua in your Lua development tool. Additionally, you get code completion for loop calls, as these are recognized by Zero Brain Studio. Let me show you how much simpler Vera script development is when using Zero Brain Studio. And this is how it works. After installation, an interpreter specifically for uh, Vera devices can be enabled by selecting it from the list of interpreters. To debug your script, you can select Start Debugging. And the IDE will then attempt to discover your device and configure it to run the script you want to debug. This only happens once per session. If everything goes smoothly, you'll see a green arrow that points to the first uh, line of code that will be executed in the debugger. You can then step through your code by using these buttons, or you can use menu items. You can set or remove breakpoints. You can look at variable information. For example, you can add a watch expression and I'll show you the current value of the variable. You can look at the stack information and the stack window will show the current stack plus all the local variables in it. And you can switch to remote console. And I'll show you uh, what you can do with it. So in addition to providing watches that allow you to look at any expression here, you can also see tooltips. So when you mouse over a variable, it'll show the value of that variable, or if you mouse over an expression, it'll show you value of that expression as well. So what can you do with uh, the remote console? For example, you can take any expression, let's say I want to see the value of sunrise, and you will immediately see the result of it after that particular code has been executed on the device. Not only that, but you can also look at the variable values that already exist in your script. This is the value of the variable sunset. You can see it's exactly the same value that you see in the stack trace. But not only you can look at the values, you can actually change the values. Let's say I want to add one to the sunset variable. And you can see that the value of that variable also changed in the stack window. And you can quickly validate that it actually has the new value. In addition to printing simple values, you can print more complex values. For example, let's say I want to print this value. Uh, I can select it, do evaluate in console, and you can see that it actually prints the category, but what if I want to print the entire table? 
you can see that not only the table is printed, it actually is pretty printed for you. You can see all the values. If you want to print it, print it as a block, you can do that as well by preprinting the equal sign. Also note that if you continue the execution and execute this line, the output is actually printed right in the output string, uh, uh, in the output window. So executing these print statements allows you to quickly get results, only during debugging, but still quickly get results from your script. In addition to debugging your scripts, you can also debug events. And Zero Brain Studio supports two ways in which events can be debugged, and I'll briefly show you both. Using the first way, you can turn debugging on for any event. And as you can see, this script starts debugging in two seconds, then it calls turn on event in five seconds, then turn off event in 12 seconds, then stops debugging and then calls turn off event again. And we'll see what happens when we execute the script. So we start debugging, we execute the script, and in five seconds, yeah, you can see the turn on has been executed. So we can step through this code. You can actually see the result being printed. It has been called already seven times. You can execute loop log command and notice that after we step through the turn on code, the execution got to turn off because by this time 12 seconds has already actually passed. So you can also step through this code again. And when you turn off, it gets to the stop. And then we execute the stop, the debugging is off. But turn off has been executed one more time. So notice the value was eight, but if we execute it one more time and look at the turn off value, actually it should be off count. The value is nine because it was executed one more time, but the debugging was off. So we simply incremented the, uh, the counter. So the second way is similar, but the debugging is turned on and off for each individual event. And we don't need to do anything else here. We wait for five seconds to get turn on called. Yep, and you can see the event that happens here. After we execute it, the turn off should be triggered as well. Yep, and you can see the turn off event is executed. And you can see the result is printed as 10 now. And after this session is done, you see the debugging is completed. So there are three other things I'd like to mention. One is the autocomplete and tool tips that have been provided. When you start typing the code, you can actually see that the IDE will offer suggestions for the methods that uh, this loop classes may have. So let's say I want to have sunrise method. And not only it offers me autocomplete, but when I start a function, it actually provides some information about that function. Details of the parameters, examples of its usage, and things like that. Another thing that Zero Brain Studio provides is a simple XML file viewer. And in that File Viewer, you not only can edit XML files, but you can actually do folding. And it will color code known and unknown elements. So as you can see, all known elements are colored in blue, and all the other elements will be colored in red. And the last but not least is that the IDE provides an either way to send files to the actual Vera device. If you right click on this file, let's say I start debugging, and I right click on this file, you'll see that it provides you an option to upload file to one of the folders on the device. And you can actually configure the target folder. When you select it, it uploads the file that you've selected to that particular folder. This integration gives you a convenient way to run and debug your home automation scripts on the device, to experiment with various loop calls and review their results, 
and to interact with your scripts and event handlers without resorting to log calls. It also provides a simple way of managing your files and simplifying typing of your scripts by providing autocomplete suggestions and helpful tool tips. Get the very integration package for ZeroBrain Studio and give it a try. Thank you.